welcome to Nyambu, a program to get you clicked and connect. Of course, we cannot start the the podcast without stating the elephant in the room, of course, right? About what is actually happening in uh, Palestine and Israel. Uh, it has been a talk of the town, of the world, even. Uh, if I could recap on what has been happening in the last two weeks is according to Al Jazeera of course 11 days of relentless Israeli bombing to the Gaza Strip and thousands of rockets has been launched back into Israel by Hamas um, building that housed multiple international media were being leveled to the ground by Israel air raids because of that, at least 248 Palestinians, including 66 children, were killed. In Israel's side, 12 people were killed, including two children. And the, the last time I know, it's supposed to be a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. But just hours after that agreement for ceasefire, we saw Israel attacking Al-Aqsa Mosque. So can you walk us through about what is actually happening between the two states, Budina? Because it's it's like... Now you mentioned just earlier, happened. right? This is not necessarily between states. It's between Israel and Hamas. And you know what Hamas is, right? Hamas is okay. just okay. one faction uh, of uh, uh, political groupings inside of uh, Palestine that has been fighting uh, very fiercely against uh, Israel. So it's very interesting that people have been capturing it as Israel versus Hamas strikes rather than uh, Israel versus um, Palestinians. So what, what's interesting uh, to note here is that the past uh, 11 days is one of the most uh, deadliest and uh, most destructive strikes that Israel has done so far. But one thing that we have to note, this kind of occasions uh, happened you know, on very frequent basis. Almost every few years, you will hear about strikes and uh, uh, tensions between Israel and Palestine. Uh -huh. So every uh, one thing to notice is that every few years, there will always be uh, some kind of tension between Israel and Palestine. Usually the scale of the destruction is not as uh, staggering as today because what we just uh, recently witnessed is that uh, Gaza Strip is not only bombarded um, in the housing sites or compounds where they say the uh, Hamas uh, activists and uh, uh, guerrilla uh, uh, fighters are mm -hmm. uh, living but they also mm -hmm. strike buildings where they know for sure that's uh, also the headquarters of some news agencies. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, it, uh, Israel is willing to destroy um, the entire building rather than um, going and chase the Hamas directly. So this narrative that Israel has been using that Hamas is using human shield is, mm -hmm. you know, getting getting out of um, out of what do you call it out of uh, proportion it's really uh, getting to the point where it doesn't make sense at all okay uh, about the uh, yesterday ceasefire budina about that uh, there has been an agreement between hamas and israel to have a ceasefire after the 11 days of unrest, bombing, and attacks. But the last time I checked, of course, uh, Israel is still attacking Al-Aqsa Mosque. So what do you think what will be happening between uh, Hamas and Israel? After this? Yeah, after the, you know, the attacks. You know, the, the thing about conflicts um, that has been uh, happening uh, for multiple years, even decades, is that um, one shot of uh, ceasefire often is not enough. Uh, the thing is, can we uh, have we handled the source of the problem, which 
in my view, this is a problem of existential uh, existentialism of Israel versus Palestine. Uh, Israel is not in any position. There is no sign from within Israel uh, for them to relinquish uh, power, territory, uh, not even influence uh, in the region. Um, the I guess the the latest update about Israel Palestine was about the status of Jerusalem as the the capital city, mm. right? Mm. If yeah, and and the the status of the two state, whether Israel is ever going to recognize that there there is the Palestine um, state. So these two are very central. And the thing is, Israel is saying or and showing signs that it is not interested in having uh, Palestine as a state and get recognized for it. And Jerusalem is to be fully taken over by Israel. So it's a very existential question. Uh, once um, any country take a, a very maximum demand on something, negotiation will be very hard to do. And the point of any ceasefire is to go to negotiation table. So having Hamas stopping the, the ceasefire or agreeing to stop their uh, rocket launchings also doesn't mean much uh, on the Palestinian side because Hamas is not the kind of group that will be willing to go into negotiation table. It also has a maximum demand of turning uh, Palestine into a uh, Islamic country, so a religious-based uh, country. And um, there's, there's a big question how how or who, yeah, who will negotiate uh, with Israel if any peace talk is ever going to happen? So it's a very, um, it's a very complex issue that you cannot imagine will 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 um, will end um, the ceasefire in a in a nice mm. in a nice ending. <laughs> Perhaps the other thing that I should also share with you and you can uh, ask me further about is about this uh, history of Middle East uh, that's mm -hmm. been very full with conflicts. Okay. So I think to many people we often forget that Israel and Palestine is not the only story from that region. Yeah. The only sad story, the only uh, story of irony uh, from, yeah. from Middle East. Um, we pay a lot of attention to uh, Israel and Palestine, but on the other end, we forget that there are a mm -hmm. uh, very sad story about people in Yemen. Mm -hmm. They are yeah. also Muslim. <laughs> mm -hmm. they, they are treated really badly by whom? Yeah. By Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Whoever pay attention to that and who, who fight for... Their own neighbor. neighbor. Yeah, their own neighbor. So... Um, if we look at the Middle East, we cannot separate Israel and Palestine with mm -hmm. the reality that Arab countries are divided. Yeah. That Middle East is populated by Arab states, by mm -hmm. the Jews, and by mm -hmm. the Persian. Okay. But the Arab comprise of uh, the largest um, you know, in, in, in the population and also in, in components of countries. We have Algeria, Bahrain, Djibouti, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, <laughs> Palestine, mm -hmm. Syria, mm -hmm. um, Saudi Arabia, UAE, mm -hmm. uh, Qatar. I mean, many, many Arab-based countries, Muslim-based. Uh, but they they have their own, uh, their own take of how they're government should be run and how they should relate with the Israel-Palestine conflict. Mm -hmm. Same yes. thing with the same thing with the Persian, Iran, Turkey, uh, and then the Persian is uh, comprised of Pakistan and Afghanistan mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. They also have yeah. different take on <laughs> Israel-Palestine. Yeah. And then the Jews. Yeah. So I guess one thing that pro uh, I would like to uh, highlight here is that 
Israel knows, I think, I really think that Israel knows there is a fundamental uh, weakness among the Arabs mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that easily divides them. Yeah. Uh, and they, the Israeli takes uh, advantage of this situation. Yeah.